Welcome! In this video we will have a closer look at XRP Scan. So XRP Scan is, generally speaking, a explorer, or well, some people also call it crawlers, um, for exploring the and gathering data from the XRP Ledger. So all of this data obtained here and being displayed here is being queried from the XRP Ledger. So they have a backend service and also, um, well, prepare the data, so they query it from the XRP Ledger and then prepare it themselves. But all this data is gathered from the, from the XRP Ledger. So we can see here the base metrics, we can see here the current ledger we are at. So we can see, so it's called the ledger, also the block height. So on Bitcoin it's called block height and on other um, blockchain technologies they call it differently. But in this case, on the, on the XRP Ledger, a block is called a ledger. So we can see where right now 67 million 330,544 ledgers have been closed so far without error. Uh, we can see the successful payments, so probably of today. We can see today's transactions. We can see how many accounts have been created. We can see how long it takes until a ledger closes. So when you do a transaction, it takes about 3.8 seconds until the ledger, until the transaction has been persisted and then finalized and closed. We can see how many transactions per second the XRP Ledger is currently handling. So about 18.5 transactions per second. And we can see already how much XRP has been burned so far. And so far, almost 10 million XRP are burned. Well, last place here, we can see the validated ledgers. So every 3.8 seconds, this number, so this changes. So now we ledger index 555, and then we ledger index 556, and so on. And also you can click at the ledger index and then can inspect how many, what transactions have been validated on a certain ledger index. So we can see here that's ledger hash, then the parent hash, so the, the from before. We can see what has what happened in here. So we can see, for example, that many people were trading, so many offers in there. We can see that somebody has sent a payment from FTX to Binance. We can see a trust that some, somebody has set a trust line or removed it or whatever. Again, a payment, so these are boring now, we, we cover them. We have an offer cancel, so somebody might be um, canceling a limit buy or sell order on the DEX. Um, and anything else in there? No, so now these are all the same types. On the right side, you can see uh, the result of the transaction, so usually there should be mostly only success uh, results in there, but obviously a transaction can also fail, for example, insufficient, fee, uh, insufficient reserve or other reasons. And we can also see in here uh, what has been traded. For example, we've got here offers for, for example, some uh, tokens on the XRP Ledger. We've got here offers for XRP itself and so on. Right. And yeah, that's what you can do here. Also, if you see any issued currency, you can just also click on it and then gather more information about the issuer. So if you click on that one right now, I ran out the issuing account. And there you can, for example, check how much how much tokens were there issued. But right now, uh, to be actually think, oh no, my my bad. It's the account of the person who created the offer actually. So if we would click on any other, uh, well, if you just click on whatever, let's just see. Okay, I'm just gonna click on that one as well. But actually, it should be the issue. Yeah, yeah, it's the issue. My bad. Yeah. So if you click on the currency name, then you get an issue account. Right, so let's go back to main side. And also I've got the tab for the validators. So these are obviously very important for the entire consensus mechanism. As you know, there are the, you can see also all the validators in which you, UNL, so which unique load list they're using. So currently they're using the Expo Ledger Foundation unique node list. Um, all right, and we can also have a look at the registry. It's generally speaking also if you just click on validators here. And now we can see all the validators. So there are right now about 156 in this list. Um, and you can also see for which net, uh, so for which uh, well, chain, we could call it chain, they're working for. So right now these are all uh, validators working on the main chain. And for example, we put here some of them working on a test net. Right, well, as we see here, we can see here the, uh, uh, these, if you click on star here, you can see by wi on which UNLs this validator has been suggest recommended by. So for example, as you know, anybody can create a, UNL, uh, a node list, okay? For example, you could also create, create the XRP dev node list and, do, uh, and host it on, on vl.xrpdev.com, for example. And I could put on that node list whatever nodes I'd like to. And if, if the other validators agree to use it, then it's great, then it goes on like that. And we can see, for example, here this validator 
It's going to be recommended by on the XOPL Foundation list, the Ripple list, and on the Core list. So the first one was the Ripple.com list, but uh, after that point, after initiation, um, the nodes, uh, well, the nodes um, providers or whatever. So, for example, also I'm currently thinking about soon setting up a node, uh, can themselves choose which UNL they want to use. So each node can decide themselves who to trust. So each node is responsible for their own UNL. It's very important to understand. Most, most people don't get that. We can also see, uh, we can now see the early domain. We can also see, um, uh, uh, this is part of the so-called fee voting. So every 256 ledgers, there's a, a thing that's called a flag ledger. And there, it's also the fee voting takes place on that. And uh, we can see every 256 ledgers, all the uh, all the values are, like I said, uh, voting on the fees. And if you have a majority, so I think, yeah, a simple majority is enough um, to um, get the change on the new fee. And you can see many values voting for 10 too. So meaning that the base reserve, so if you have an account, at least you have to need 10 XRP as the base reserve. So you can move it and uh, unless you delete the account. And then with the owner reserve for each object which is stored for you on the XRP ledger, for example, an escrow or also by limit order, which isn't fulfilled immediately or, um, or also for um, a multi-sign list. All these things are so-called objects on the XRP ledger. And for all of these things, you would have to pay, uh, well, the, the reserve balance gets raised by two. And also if you, set a t if you set a trust line, so if you try to add a token, the reserve also increases by two, and that's the so-called owner fee. And yeah, that's how it works. And you just all accumulate all of that, and then you know your minimum reserve. All right, so we can also click on any of the, uh, some of these validators. So if you just click on those, we can see the validator, how, what, how good of a job the validator is doing. So we can see uh, the validator over a time, time span of many months has been very, so it has been staying in consensus and mostly being been in agreement. And sometimes it's you know, some wicks to the downside. So these are usually just maintenance parts or maybe also uh, the internet connection is not fast enough or other reasons. But usually a validator has to maintain uh, high consensus because that's yeah, it's the hard piece of the entire thing. Um, what else is there? We can also see another very important part, the amendments. So we can see on which amendments each validator is voting on. So we can see, for example, this the XRP validator to FTSO.EU is voting in favor of these amendments. And if enough values are voting on an amendment, the code change is taking place. So they are updating all the versions and the code is already in there. But if enough people, um, uh, if enough values vote in favor of a certain amendment, then it gets activated. It's going to be the same for the new uh, NFT standard. So for the XLS, whatever D20 thing it was. Uh, well, I just have to enter a ripple in there quickly. Yeah, my bad, that one here. Right, it's in, under the XOPL dash standards uh, side here. And uh, if you go onto here, you can see this is, for example, something people are talking a lot about because it would introduce native, um, it would in introduce native NFTs on the XRP ledger. So currently, the current version of the XLS uh, 14D, whatever, uh, is just using issued currencies, more or less and issuing the smallest amount possible. So it's currently a workaround, it's a little bit hacky, um, but well, in the new future, let's call it that, this standard might take, uh, well, they create, might program the code change, and at some point, then after it's coded, it's not taking place immediately. It can take several months, even maybe one to two years until it takes place, if enough LD is voting in favor of it. So m enough, so we need again 80% uh, consensus until a amendment is being activated. We've got, for example, this ticket badge amendment, and right now it only has an, uh, a consensus of 76.92 percent and if it's not above 80 percent it doesn't get activated and yeah that's how it works that's also how the activation of new code changes to XRP ledger so uh, works right so we covered also that we, we talked about the amendments so we can again see here all the uh, amendments and there wow cool so we can even see that some amendments just passed here so we can see here uh these are two amendments the fixed standard amount canonical analyze and the flow sort strands, these two amendments passed and will be activated soon. So there's an ETA for the 11th of November. Cool. Can't wait. That is awesome. 
So we can also have a short look at that. So they, they constantly advance this website. So, ah, okay, so they, it's already certain which ledger. Okay, all right. So th quickly to explain the ETA, it's uh, ETA, it's very, it's already certain which ledger index the change is gonna take place. Um, so that's why they're trying to estimate how long it will approximately take because they will never know when ledger index, uh, whatever X or Z uh, happens. And I would be interested though, if it's somewhere public, to, so to where I can find out uh, which ledger, in, ledger index it's gonna be activated. Um, for, well, I would have probably to look into the code, I guess, um, or whatever, at some other place. <laughs> um, so if I'm, not, if I'm not able to find it out quickly, then I'm gonna leave it out, leave it out. And the answer is no, there's no, right now, no certain place we can look, but so I'm gonna go back. Right, and we've got also docs here, also an interesting part, but you can look into those yourself. Um, and also we've got another important section, the metrics. So we can see how many payments happened today, we can see how many accounts have been created, deleted, uh, we can see how many, I think with currency exchanges, I guess it's more about the DEX offers, I assume. We can see the closed ledgers, the transactions, how many of those were successful. We can see the t uh, transactions per second, uh, um, well, averaged uh, on the day. So today, the XOPL ledger has handled about 18.9 seconds, uh, well, 18.9 transactions per second. Um, right, we can see how many uh, account, well, how many people set, for example, the email or the domain or something else. We can see the credit offers and right, you can see how many, how many escrows were finished and how many people set a trust line. So that's also a very high metric. So 39,000, well, you, well, accounts have set a trust line today. So if we have a look at the metrics here, we can see we've got now different, obviously, uh, uh, well, different metrics we can look at now. <laughs> we can see, for, for example, the number of transactions executed and also very important is seen, I've seen sometimes people uh, making this mistake, oh no, it's so low there. Um, the, the reason why that is, is that it's for this day, it's for the 29th. And 29th of October just started like three hours ago. It's very important, this graph uses UTC. So UTC is right now, if we just look, have a look at UTC now, if we'll have a look at that, we can see it's right now uh, 3 a.m. So three hours ago would be 2 a.m. in my local time. So I'm right now in Central European Standard Time. Um, so it's, like I said, it's UTC. So very important to understand that don't think that it's that it has gone down or something that you have to wait until the end of the day to actually say or find out how much it actually is. So you can see here, like I said, oh no, there's 1.7 million transactions there, but today there's only 160,000. Oh no, nobody's using it anymore. No, not at all. So do, please don't read that graph here incorrectly. So like I said, it's going to rise. So if we would just refresh now, if we have a look 169534, if they're not caching it, then we should see a different number. Yeah, they're caching it. So probably every 10 minutes they're refreshing the results here. All right, so let's go on. We can see the number of payments when we come to another, the number of currency exchanges. So we'd have to look into those. I guess it's just from one currency to another. I guess so from whatever. I guess maybe in regards to all of it, I'm not really sure now. We can see how many new accounts have been activated. So for example, there have been days where a crazy amount of accounts has been activated. The average number of transactions per ledger, um, right, the number of closed ledgers, and the average number of sex between ledgers, right. What else is there? We can also have a look at the transaction types. That's in as far very interesting because you can see how many people, for example, sent a payment yesterday. So yesterday there were lots of payments on the 28th of October. We can also see how many people uh, changed some info in their account. Uh, and now there's another interesting metric, the trust lines. So if we have a look at the trust lines here, you can see that it has completely exploded because more and more, well, projects were launching the Exo Ledger and all with, all with the stuff of the airdrops. And you can see here that this number, like I said, has completely exploded. So there was a short time, which is also quite crazy here in December. Uh, but yeah, it's also quite interesting to see over, the, like I said, over the, six, over the last six months, nothing, nobody's saying trust then. So a trust set is like I said, setting, uh, a, adding a token. Uh, so like I said, setting a trust then. Well, that's there, we can see how many accounts have been deleted. We can see the offers again, the cancel offers. So obviously, like I said, if somebody sets a buy limit, uh, well, a buy or sell limit order, they can cancel it afterwards if it didn't get fulfilled yet. 
Okay, it's a track, uh, so th there are also tracks, so they're not being used that much. You were able to use them on the XRP toolkits, but for now they're de deactivated. Um, and right, so let's have a look at the last thing. We've got the results here. We can see here the uh, result status of a transaction. So transactions have, so, uh, have uh, error codes, and the best code you can get is the so-called test success code. The test success code means that the transaction has gone through, has been validated, and everything's awesome. Then there's the tag destination tag needed, meaning that if somebody tries to do a tra transaction, for example, to an exchange, but the exchange has activated a setting that you have to, uh, to set a destination tag to send it, then the transaction is being aborted. That's very important for exchanges because exchanges can only know that you are you by your destination tag. So that's how they map, uh, map it because everybody, so most people send it to the same address to, to well, top up their account. You can see the unfunded payments, so you can see all the stuff about the error codes. All right, so I made, like I said here, a updated video on XRP scan, so the web is constantly evolving. It's pretty cool to use. One last look we're gonna have is at a transaction level. So you can look at any, so for example, if, an, if you have an address, you can just enter it here and press the enter key, and you can see an account here. Also, you can, if you have a transaction, you can also just paste the transaction hash. It's also possible if you just enter it here, then you get to the transaction itself. You can see from where it is being sent. Uh, in this case, it would be an offer and what uh, what was being exchanged here. Um, right, so if we go back to an account, we can also see here lots of other things. Uh, for example, we can see the transactions. What has this account been doing? So it's been trading a lot uh, in Chinese Yuan. We can see the tokens. It has, it has a token for CNI. You can see if this account is issued in the currencies. We can see the trust lines this account has. We can see the current orders on the DEX, so there are current buy limit, uh, buy limit orders, uh, persistent on exit ledger. We can see the escrows, we can see the settings. We can see which accounts this account has activated, so it's also a pretty cool feature. Um, well, it's slowing quite long though. <laughs> Okay, no ancestry. Uh, oh, I mean, no, no activation. And then here you can see the ancestry, how, and how this account was activated. Like we have more or less a tree going down all the way because every account is being activated by another account. And that way you get a tree. Uh, well, I'm just, just gonna enter tree and IT. Then it's easier to display. Oh, uh, informatics. So that way, so you can see that one here, that's the tree. And on top would be all the accounts next to each other uh, created in the Genesis block. And those accounts have activated other accounts and these accounts have activated other accounts again. And you can see this entrance tree, you can see that one in, um, if you just click on Ancestry here, you can see the, this account by Ripple, this Ripple account activate this one, this account activate this one and so on. And somebody uh, who, so the who, 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 Huobi Global 1 account, activated the Huobi Global 5 account, and we created that one, that one, and now we're here. So that's, so we can see that this account has more or less 14 accounts before him. So in the ancestry line, 14 accounts before that one. And it's also a pretty cool visualization here. We can also analyze it, how many incoming and outcoming SOP payments were there. And there is also some, is also some information regarding uh, the flare distribution. Um, and yeah. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful uh, getting more closely to the XRP scan functionality. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.